You're listening to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show, hosted by Joey and Holly Baird. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show is on the air, and it's heard on WNLV 860 AM and W293CX 106.5 in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. WWDB 860 AM in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. WAAM 1600 AM and 92.7 FM, Ann Arbor, Michigan. And KMET 1490 AM, Banning, California. Coming up on the program today, we're going to talk about weeding. There are several different options when it comes to weeding to get those unwanted plants out of your garden, as well as the science behind composting, what really goes on in that pile that allows those items to break down into good soil. Plus, our own Holly Baird will be with us talking about safe canning and your garden questions. The hour is jam-packed, and we only have one hour to fill up, so let's get started right now. Welcome to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show. So glad you're taking time out of your day to join us on the program. Whether you're in Milwaukee, Philadelphia, Southeast Michigan, Banning, California, or across the country, around the world, listening via the simple radio app, the TuneIn app, or through the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com under the radio tab, or podcast replay, in-studio video replay. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm your host, Joy Baird. Beside me as my wife, co-host, best friend, and gardening partner, Holly Baird. You can find all of our content at the Wisconsin Vegetable gardener.com that's our website that contains 1400 garden video short and long format of in garden and in studio video of a variety of garden related topics and conversations to help your garden grow better the executive sponsor of the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show is Power Planter. Planting conditions are always favorable with the Power Planter Earth Auger. No matter what the job is, Power Planter has the right size for you. Simply attach to a drill and let the Power Planter do the work for you. Create planting holes fast and efficiently with ease. No matter the soil type, it does the job effortlessly. Increase your root-to-soil contact. Leave the shovel and the spade in the shed. Hand-welded and made in the USA, we offer a lifetime warranty on product defects. Find the size that fits your product at powerplanter.com. You can give us a you can reach us in a variety of different ways and they all revolve around the IV Organics 3-in-1 Plant Guard contact lines. IV Organics 3-in-1 Plant Guard naturally protects plants against damaging sunburn, insects and rodents, protects newly installed plants and trees, shields prune and damaged surfaces for use on your roses, fruit and nut trees, ornamental trees and shrubs. This product is non-toxic, environmentally safe and organic. For more information visit ivorganics.com. Also send us an email through IV Organics 31 Plant. Email inbox at email address is twvgshow at gmail.com or you can send us a text on the Instant Access IV Organic 31 Plant Guard. Instant Access text hotline, send your questions. Text us at 414-368-9311. That number again, you can text us 414-368-9311. Well, it's summertime and our gardens are flourishing as with the heat, but additionally to the vegetables in which we are growing, we have competition in the garden, and those are weeds. Now, the definition of a weed is a unwanted uh, plant that's in the wrong place, an unwanted plant in the wrong place. Well, for many of the weeds in our garden, they compete with the vegetables in which we are growing, so we have to do something about it. And there's, we're going to talk about weeding. Now, Holly and I are not immune to the the problem of weeds. We have plenty of weeds, and we have more weeds than what we know what to do with. There are certain things that we have done to prepare beds during the pre-planting season. Some of it has been very beneficial. Others seems as if it has not affected the beds, and more weeds have been encouraged to grow, uh, even in our efforts to reduce the weeds by doing everything that we know what to do. So we're going to go over how you can weed and uh, be successful at it or uh, greatly reduce the number of weeds in which you have in your garden beds, uh, raised beds, or containers. Now, in your containers and your raised beds, you should have minimal amount of weeds, uh, assuming that you have brought in good rich soil compost that has been broke down properly and killed the viability of all those weed seeds. So what we do is every three years or so we take our beds and we pull out every weed that we possibly can. 
You use a garden fork. I use a garden fork. Now, a garden fork is not a hay fork. It is a hard tine. Hard tine. It's like a, it looks like a, a eating fork, basically, but just larger. It's got flat tines. We do that for a few reasons. One, we're not cutting the roots, but we're removing the root structure, and we'll talk about the importance of doing such and the benefits that it provides. Right. So when you remove the roots... What happens is weed can, weeds can propagate themselves by their roots. So when you remove the roots, you help reduce that propagation. If you were to till your garden, which we don't till our garden, but if you were to do this and just turn the weeds over, basically what you're doing is you're taking that weed root and you're breaking it up into a bunch of pieces. Divisions. Which, divisions, which would create more weeds. And then you have one plant in which you could have extracted by hand and removed all the roots now because of the tillage or the cutting up of the root system now you have multiplied that by tenfold of all those tiny little chunks of root now regenerate because that's what plants do their plants whether you're growing a tomato plant or a weed is growing in your garden the nature's uh, goal is to reproduce and to allow that generation of species or variety to continue to grow, regardless of you as the gardener want it to or not. So even though you may go in there, and, and this is the example in which we have uh, done, remove the root system, remove the root structure, that does introduce other seeds that have been laying dormant. Now, whether you till or you remove it with a garden fork, spade, shovel, you're turning over the soil. And there are seeds that lay dormant beneath the soil for three, five, some can last up to 80 years. Now, whenever you turn that soil over, you've exposed that to oxygen, sunlight, water, moisture, all those combinations in, uh, greatly increase the success of that seed germinating of that weed seed or that pepper seed that was fell last year and rotted on the ground. So that's where we're at. We, some beds we have weeded and we have still no weeds in the bed whatsoever. Don't know. Phenomenal. Great. Wonderful. Now we heavily mulched last year. I, I'm, I'm, I believe that had, with leaves from the fall, had some significant value to suppressing and choking out those weeds that tried to come up and then they died out because they didn't have the availability of sunlight uh, to to grow. Other beds worked it very diligently, worked all the weeds out, and we have just as many weeds now as we did before. Those beds did not get mulched heavy at all last year. So there is a correlation to the two, mulching heavy, allowing some of those seeds under these mulch to germinate, but dying off because they don't have the sunlight. All right, right. that makes sense to you. Uh, The other thing is, if you do have weeds now, after a nice rain, it's good to pull them out. You want to get all the roots. And the reason why is, well, we just talked about the roots, but the reason why it's good to get to do it after a nice rain is because that soil is moist and it's going to be easier to pull them out than when the soil is hard and dry. The majority of the root structure will come out. Now, you can also just take a hoe or a trowel and cut those weeds at very young seedlings. Now, we're not talking when they're 3, 4, 5, 10 inches tall. When they're just emerging out of the soil, you can go ahead and knock the tops off because that's going to get 90% of those are going to die because they don't have enough energy left in the seed coating to grow uh, in, in, the, um, in, the, in, the, in the garden. So that's another way in which you can go about doing it. Mulching is another a great way to suppress the weeds if they're not germinated uh, or have just began to germinate. Another thing is to weed when the weeds are small. You want to weed not when they're like level to the ground, but typically about one to two inches, and that's going to help as well. It's going to make them easier to get, and also it's going to help prevent them from spreading. As they get more mature, they put on seeds, they do their thing that then they can spread faster yeah if the if you didn't get a chance to weed them when they were two or three inches tall or prior to that when they were just emerging and now you've got a plant that's five ten maybe 15 inches tall because i know we've got some of those in our garden thistles for that instance if you can get in there and get them pulled now one it can be easier to pull because you actually have something to grasp onto and two get them like holly you said before they go to seed otherwise now you have one plant that's put a thousand seeds on and you're going to have to deal with that problem. We've dealt with that issue time and time again. Now, for full disclosure here, full transparency, I guess is what the term would be, we do have some sponsors of the program that do offer products in which helps you 
control the weeds in your garden, on your patio, on your porch, on your dry well porch. You shouldn't have weeds on your porch. On your driveway. You never, you never know. Yeah. Uh, now, flame engineering uh, is this a is probably not some a flame engineer is probably not something you want to use if you have a wood porch. Wood porch. No. No. Uh, it is a flaming tool that is a wand that attaches to a propane torch, small or large, and it is. You're killing the weeds with heat. You're not burning them to the ground. What you're doing is you're heat hitting them with the flame, which disrupts the, um, the the cell molecules that kills the plant. No chemicals involved. Nothing. You just real quick. And a lot of large organic agricultural at, uh, farms utilize this on a much larger scale. They use like a 30 or 40 foot boom with flames and they go through the field prior to planting to kill off the germinating right. plants. Uh, so you could get one of those. Uh, you can use coupon code w, uh, WVG19 and get free shipping on that if you're interested in using that. BioSafe is another uh, item in which you can use. BioSafe is an organic weed killer. Right. If they, and they, all, they offer um, an array of uh, eco-friendly products, but they do have an organic weed killer, and that's something that we've used in our garden with most success. Um, Creeping Charlie is its own beast, but if it's worked for a lot of different things. And you can save 10% using the code TWVG at checkout. BioSafe is nice because it's not spreading things into your groundwater like glyphosate with like Roundup. Um, so yeah, that's BioSafe. Then we're not... Telling you these things, so you run out and buy them because you think that 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 what we're pushing. This is not an info commercial. We work with these companies, uh, one to get coupon uh, codes in order to save you money, but two because we believe and we know and we've used these products and they work. Uh, we're not going to tell you to do something that we do not uh, believe in or have used. So uh, finally, Pro Plugger, you can extract the weeds out that way. Explain what the Pro Plugger is. Sure. So the Pro Plugger is like a, it's like a metal tube with um and what it does is that when you dig it into the soil it pulls out little plugs of soil so you could do this with the weeds we use this for planting but you can planting. you yeah, extract you like dandelions and large deep root tap tap root uh plants on that and it's really easy to use and it, it it's very effective so that is just some of the different types of uh, ways in which you can weed. We could talk about weeding for an hour, uh, but we uh, choose not to do that. Uh, if you've got any questions, you certainly email us at twvgshow at gmail.com. When we come back, we're going to talk about composting, the science behind composting, and why it, what happens in that compost pile. You're listening to Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener. Gardening information, visit the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener.com. But wait, wait, wait until after the show. We still have more garden information to talk about. Big Fats has a variety of unique and delicious hot sauces available at mild, medium, and hot. A small company looking to change the world with all natural hot sauces made from quality ingredients and a whole lot of love. BigFatsHotSauce.com Beans and Barley Marketing Cafe, a neighborhood specialty grocery store for the east side of the greater Milwaukee area where you can find all you need from fresh produce to bakery to organic frozen dinners, from wine to fresh squeezed carrot juice, a health food store with hundreds of products, vitamin supplements, bath and body items, magazines, cards, books, and a knowledgeable staff catering a Open daily at 8 a.m. The restaurant serves breakfast, lunch, and dinner seven days a week with a menu of good, healthy, homemade food, including vegetarian and non-vegetarian specialties. 1901 East North Avenue, Milwaukee, 414-278-7878, and online at beansandbarley.com. Do you want fresh produce delivered right to your neighborhood? Check out Tree Ripe Citrus Company. Find out where to pick up quality produce at tree-ripe.com. They have beautiful tasty peaches and juicy sweet blueberries. If you're tired of the non-taste peaches and the bad blueberries from your local grocer, Tree Ripe has what you need. They come right to a stop in your neighborhood, fresh off the truck, right from the source. To find locations and schedules, visit tree-ripe.com. They're in Iowa, Michigan, Minnesota, Illinois, and right here in Wisconsin. Tree-Ripe.com is your go-to place for the freshest produce around. The Handy Safety Knife is a patented high-quality knife that's worn like a ring, so it's always conveniently at hand and very easy and efficient to work with. That's why you'll find the Handy Safety Knife at work in a wide range of industries and applications. Learn more at HandySafetyKnife.com. Use coupon code WVG to get 10% off and free shipping one-time use only at HandySafetyKnife.com. 
Leave wet soil alone. This garden tip is sponsored by BioSafe, organic solutions that are effective. They offer an array of eco-friendly products, from plant food to fertilizer to one-of-a-kind herbicides, organic weed killer. Grow stronger, healthier with BioSafe. Visit BioSafe.net to learn more. And save 10% on your next order by using coupon code TWVG at checkout. Avoid digging or planting in wet soil. Working, it can damage the soil structure. Wait until the soil is crumbly and no longer a firm ball when you squeeze it in your hand. It doesn't have to be bone dry to till or to work it. Flame Engineering, home of the Weed Dragon, the perfect propane torch kit for home and garden use. For killing weeds, no need to pull or spray. 100 other uses. Find out more at flameengineering.com. Use coupon code WVG19 to get free shipping. Do you seek safe, effective nutrition solutions to boost your health and quality of life? Standard Process is your trusted whole food supplement manufacturer with 90 years of expertise. Our third generation family owned company proudly grows nutrient rich ingredients at our certified organic farm in Palmyra, Wisconsin, enabling us to produce high quality whole food solutions that change lives. For help identifying the best supplements for you, find a local healthcare professional today at standardprocess.com forward slash patients. Feed your garden all season long with the Hydro Feed Fertilizer Injector by Chapin. Hydro Feed Injector can be filled with water soluble fertilizer and connected to a garden hose or irrigation system, whether drip, sprinkler, or soaker hose. Fertilizer is drawn into the water system at a consistent ratio to feed and water your garden at the same time. Three models are available for gardens of different sizes. Find Hydro Feed at the Home Depot, A's Hardware, or www.chapinmfg.com When it comes to bulk landscaping materials, Blue Mills Garden and Landscape Center is where everyone goes. Whatever the project, we have the materials you need with over 40 varieties to choose from. Soils, mulches, gravels, decorative stones, fresh cut sod. Blue Mills has these products in stock and ready for easy pickup or fast delivery. So what are you waiting for? Now is the time to get your yard back into shape. Stop in and pick these materials up or call us for delivery today. Nobody does bulk landscaping materials better than Blue Mel's Garden and Landscape Center. Blue Mel's 4930 West Loomis Road, 414-282-4220. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show is brought to you by the following. Eco Garden Systems, Row Maker, Shield and Seal, World's Coolest Rain Gauge, Big Fats Hot Sauce, Chapin International, Drip Garden, Norwalk Juicers, New New Healing Ointment, Phylum Bioproducts, Soil Savvy, Tree Ripe. Find all sponsors at the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com and thank them for their support. Now back to the Wisconsin Vegetable Garden Radio Show. With your hosts, Joey and Hallie Berry. Holly, let's go to the Ivy Organic 3-in-1 Plant Guard Hotline. We have a caller on the line with a question. Caller, you there? Yes. Go ahead with your question. I would like to know what do you can what can you do for the worms and bugs eating up your collard greens? So there's a few different things you can do. One is you can take um, diluted rubbing alcohol. Mm-hmm. So you take um, for one cup of water you take about a tablespoon of rubbing alcohol and then you spray it on your greens Mm -hmm. and then when you're going to eat them or use them you want to make sure that you just rinse it off real well but most of it's going to evaporate but it'll help keep a lot of those bugs away oh okay thank you yep thank you for your question thank you for listening so Dr. Earth is committed to clean and healthy gardening through creating cutting-edge, natural, and organic-friendly products. Based on the research and innovation, after 28 years, they are the leader in organic lawn and garden industry. They do not use ingredients such as biosolids or composted household waste or synthetic chemicals. Instead, they have manure-free fertilizers, organic soils, insect control, and liquid fertilizers. If you want to grow the best quality food organically to feed your family, that is the founding principles of what Dr. Earth is all about. They have experts to find the most innovative ways to help you grow your best organically. Visit DrEarth.com for more information on where to buy. There's a, a lot of uh, products additionally to use uh, on the greens, uh, but you want to be aware of what the base product or the, the main ingredient is 
uh, for those. Uh, and you'd also take and blast it with a hose with water. Uh, there are chemical-based applications in which you can use, but the rubbing alcohol uh, is a nice... Um, safe alternative to using the harsh chemicals uh, and powders there uh, for that. So we're going to talk about the science of a compost pile. Most people know what a compost pile is. You put stuff in a pile. And then it turns into compost. Right. And most people uh, who are of uh, the gardening world understand that there is a certain ratio in which one has to achieve in that compost pile of browns, which is the dry material, or greens, which is the moist materials. And by putting those two together, it will in turn create over a period of time black compost. So what really goes on, and, and, and compost piles can be any shape, size, form. There are things in which you should and shouldn't put in the compost pile, but that really, that guideline is set forth because of people who are in urban settings. If you're on a farm in the back 40, you just want to pile stuff up sky high, you can put anything in that pile you want. It's all going to break down just as nature has intended it to. On the flip side of that, if you are, for example, in a, a very urban setting, you want to do some sort of verm, vermiposting, composting, then you have to be more aware. And these are things that you would have to research yourself. Vermicomposting is the process of composting inside the home in a large tub with worms. It does not smell, by the way, so it's not like a reeking, horrible, rotting smell. There's a procedure and process and certain items in which can and sh- could do go in there and others in which should not go in because of that particular process. Now, again, compost piles can be anything. The recommended size of a compost pile is one cubic yard. That's three foot by three foot by three foot square. Right. So there's some very scientific things that are going on here in your compost. Now, you have a degree in environmental science, That's so you correct. can understand you you can uh, you understand this and you can break it down into a level which we're all can understand. Not that we're not incapable of uh, incapable of doing that, but you make it to a, an understandable level for all people. So what what's going on inside that compost pile that many of us are not aware of? So there's bacteria. That's mainly what's breaking down in your compost pile, and they're called the aerobes, and they require oxygen and things like that. That's why when you when you take something, you put it in a small bin or a compost uh, tumbler, something like that's going to get hot, and it, there's still oxygen getting to it, but it works a little bit faster. So if you have a if you have a quote unquote um, proper compost when you have their balance of carbons and nitrogen. That's this the is, browns and greens. That's the browns and yeah. greens, which we'll, we'll get into that in a second. Then it's going to go through three stages. This is going to happen no matter what, but this is the kind of the timeline if you're doing the browns and greens. So the first stage is called the mesophilic microorganisms, or these are the microorganisms that they thrive in temperatures of 68 to 113 degrees. Now, back up just Fair. for one minute. But whenever you talk about the heating of the process, or we're gonna, you, what is causing that heat to develop inside of that pile? It's that bacteria. That's that bacteria mm-hmm. that's uh, breaking down the items in which you put in. Now, where does that bacteria come from? It's just, it just a exists. Na- natural existence inside it's of those products. Yep. And because of the combination, that's where the heat, and they're rubbing together and, and pushing. They're doing their thing, they're doing the thing. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and, and a hot compost pile is a good compost pile. There is such but, thing as but it's, cool it's, compost. It's a process. It. Yep, yes. it's a process. So the first couple days they're doing this thing, they're they're starting to break down. They're starting the bacteria is starting to multiply, and it's starting to get hot. The aerobic process is happening. So then that takes a couple of days. So then we move on to what's called th- the thermophilic process, which thermo means like. Like uh, warm, hotter. Thermo- thermometer. Th- thermometer, take temperature. Thermos. Think? Yes. Yeah, things like that. So that's when it starts to really break down. Um, the high temperatures are going to break down things like proteins, fats, and complex carbohydrates. So if you do have a compost in your back 40. Well, fats could, are like avocados. Yeah. Avocado is a, a natural fat. It, right. right, banana peels. But also you're referring to fats being like pork chops, uh, bones, and, and that, that type of item. And again, if you live in the city, you don't want to yeah. put these things in your compost. But not it's gonna because, break up. Yeah, not because it's not going to break down. It's because it, you're going to attract every bug, insect, and rodent in the, in the uh, four-block radius to your backyard. Right. So that is the second stage, and this brings it up to about 149 degrees uh, Fahrenheit or 65 degrees Celsius. Now, in this process of these stages, do we need to continue to mix it to incorporate no. that oxygen to a certain degree in order to get that oxygen inside the pile? But qu- uh, early on in the stage, you don't because there's enough oxygen that's still feeding off of the 
the uh, the material. Okay, go ahead. Okay. So this is for a couple weeks that okay. this happens. The third stage, which is for several months, begins when the thermophilic micro, uh, microorganisms, um, they start to really just break down is what they're doing. Um, so they break down the remaining organic matter into humus. Humus is basically soil. Okay. Um, and so that's that's what happens. So it's not it's not an overnight process. No. It takes time. It needs oxygen. And that's, that's how it goes. Now... To balance the greens and browns is to create the proper environment. Um, so greens are nitrogen rich, so that includes things like grass clippings, fruit and vegetable waste, coffee grounds. Yeah. Uh, and that's the thing. Uh, a lot of greens uh, incorporate into the compost pile, and, and then you have to have a certain amount of browns as well. Right. So browns are carbon-rich yard clippings, so they can be dead leaves, branches, twigs, uh, shredded paper. Cardboard. Cardboard, anything like that. Now, people, so, there is glue toxicity in the cardboard, but that's a minor inconvenience, but we won't get into that. So a good carbon and nitrogen ratio is between 25 to 1 and 30 to 1. So you would want to have carbon. So say you had 25 pounds of carbon okay. to 1 pound of nitrogen. So 25 pounds of Shredded paper, that's a lot of shredded paper, to one pound of grass clippings. But, and, and here's the thing. Most people, or the general consensus or recommendation is 50-50 ratio. You can't go wrong with that. So what you're, you're indicating is you're, you need more browns to greens or more, ni- more carbon to nitrogen in order for this process. You can add more, but this is more the, the standard ratio in which it's going to break down at the appropriate rate and do what it needs to do better. Right. Okay. Um, so the aerobes, again, are the, the bacteria that requires the oxygen levels to, to break down. And um, so the most important thing is um, is the, the bacteria. So they consume the organic waste, and the, there's anaerobic, anaerobic, uh, anaerobic. Micro, thank you, microorganisms that are bacteria that don't require oxygen. And aerobic, uh, aerobic. Needs the oxygen. Oxygen, okay. Anaerobic does not need that yes. oxygen. Um, so they they can produce those chemicals. So 90 per- 90% of your microorganisms found in your compost are bacteria. So, and then the rest of it is things like fungi that includes molds and yeast. And then you're going to have insects such as worms, centipedes, uh, roly polies, as you call them, pill bugs, whatever you want to call them. Um, those are all common decomposers that you're going to see now that we understand how it works what it's based on your living situation what type of pile in which you can have whether on the ground or based on your municipality or township if you have to have it in an elevated or enclosed uh item such as a tumbler or a trash can with holes punched in the side of or drilled in the side of it uh in that instance and we do need to mix this pile um if we want this to break down quicker than if we just pile it up, walk away, come back in a year. Also, in order... But, but when you do mix it, you want to you be conscious because there is, just like our soil, just like everything else, it's, it's a living, breathing thing. Right. And, and so you don't want to go mix it every week. No. Some um, people, and, and here's the thing, some people, you can watch a lot of videos online, you can read a lot of stuff. Some people mix it every day. Some people mix, mix it once a week. Some people mix it once a month. It's all based on what your intentions and availability are. Obviously, if you keep the pile hot enough, long enough, it's going to kill all those seeds that you have in there. Uh, also, I mean, that, that's kind of the basis. If you keep that 100 and, was it 170 degrees for seven, 150 degrees for 72 consistent hours, it kills all the viability seeds in there, right. that type of thing. So uh, there's a many different varieties of compost piles in which you can create. It's just based on uh, what you're capable of doing. And I think that's the most important thing is that you might think, I can't compost. I I live in an apartment, or I can't compost because my neighbors will freak out or whatever. And there's many different options for you. So I think the best thing to do would just be to do your own research. If you want to compost, I'm very passionate about composting. So if you want to compost, then definitely do some research. But understand that you just cannot put it in a bucket, put a lid on it, and expect it to break down because 
you have to have that oxygen. You have to have that air circulation in that pile. Otherwise, if you put it in a bucket, put a lid on it, you're going to get a whole bucket full of slimes and stinky mess very, very quickly because there's no oxygen that's feeding. It's going to stink bad, yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and and we've all experienced this. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah. Well, uh, Holly, the summer is in full swing now, and look at who's here. Those nasty Japanese beetles, and they are uh, wreaking havoc on our gardens uh, and eating everything that they shouldn't be and what we're trying to grow. Yeah, if you're looking to successfully control beetles without damaging the environment, look no further than Beetle Gone from bio- Phylum Bioproducts. Derived from naturally occurring soil bacteria, Beetle Gone is the only organic solution that successfully controls beetle invaders. Just mix the powder and water and spray on your plants. Once ingested, the targeted pests will stop feeding and die. And since it's an organic BT product, you know it is a great choice to use it on your fruits and veggies in addition to your ornamental flowers and trees. Not only does Beetle Gone work, but what I like about most this about this product the most, it is safe to use around beneficials such as ladybugs, butterflies, and bees, and has no issue with water toxicity. Beetle Gone from Phylum Bioproducts. Dot com phylum bioproducts dot com p h y l l o m bioproducts dot com. Up next, Holly Baird with Safe Canning. You're listening to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show. Got a question? Email the show at twbgshow at gmail dot com. Power Planter is a family-owned earth auger manufacturer. The Power Planter earth auger will transform your garden experience. It helps homeowners and professionals complete almost any planting or digging project faster and more efficiently than using a shovel or a spade. Power Planter earth auger creates loose dirt when drilling holes, giving your plants better root-to-soil contact to help reduce plant loss for healthy and more beautiful trees, shrubs, flowers, vegetables, and grass. All of our augers are hand-welded and made in the USA lifetime warranty. Find the size that fits your project at powerplanter.com. Pomona's Universal Pectin is high-quality pectin that gels reliably with low amounts of any sweetener. If you're trying to reduce the amount of sugar in your diet, you'll love Pomona's Universal Pectin. Now you can make healthy homemade jams and jellies sweetened to your taste. You can use sugar, honey, or any alternative sweetener you'd like. Pomona's Universal Pectin keeps indefinitely when stored in an airtight container. Easy to use, versatile, and comes with directions and recipes in every box. Find out more and where to buy at PomonaPectin.com. Available at most natural food stores and online. The Norwalk Juicer is the best cold-pressed juicer on the market. Studies have shown the Norwalk Juicer produces 50 to 100% more juice than other juicers. And juice from the Norwalk is higher in minerals and nutritionally superior. Not only do you get more juice from your produce, but also better quality juice. Check it out at NorwalkJuicers.com. Use coupon code GARDENTALK to get free continental U.S. shipping on the Model 290 Juicer. Shield and Seal Vacuum Sealers and the highest quality vacuum sealing products, unique black and clear and all black bags protecting your produce and product better than traditional bags. Find out more at shieldandseal.com. Root Assassin, a garden tool that does all the root functions with its advanced shovel that has serrated edges on both sides. Find out more information at RootAssassinShovel.com. Garden seeds do not have to cost a fortune, just 99 cents at MIGardener.com. Now with over 450 varieties of non-GMO, heirloom, and organic flower, vegetable, and herb seeds available year-round, pay less and get more seeds. Shipping as low as $2.50. That just makes sense. Go to MIGardener.com for seeds and garden needs, tools, and special blend fertilizers. MIGardener.com. It's that simple. Family owned and operated. Yes, it's hot outside and it's summertime, but it's time to start thinking about your fall planting and the fall garden. This Michigan Garden Moment is brought to you by MIGardener.com. With over 450 varieties of heirloom and organic flowers, vegetables, and herb seeds, all for 99 cents a pack. Find out more at MIGardener.com. Many gardeners in the upper portions of the United States forget about the third season that is granted to us. That is the fall planting season. The cool weather crops in which you planted in the spring can now be planted again, or crops that did not do well in the spring. Some of these crops are carrots, peas, turnips, rutabagas, carrots, beets, radishes, and lettuce, just to name a few. 
We find that the cooler nights and the shorter days allow these crops to thrive and grow much better than they do compared to spring. In spring, the days are getting longer and warmer, and these crops are daylight sensitive and heat sensitive, and they begin to go to bolt or seed much quicker than they do when you plant them in fall. The only thing you have to calculate for fall planting is when to put it in the ground in late summer to allow the time of that plant to mature prior to a hard freeze. Many of these crops can sustain a light frost, and actually the crop actually is sweeter because the frost releases the sugars inside of the plant. You can go to your favorite search engine and type in what crops can grow in fall in my area. It'll give you a nice list in which you can find. And MI Gardener still has seeds available for many of the cool weather crops that you can plant. So if you've not had success with spring planting cool weather crops, try the fall. This Michigan Garden Moment is brought to you by MIGardener.com. With over 450 varieties of heirloom and organic flowers, vegetables, and herb seeds, all for 99 cents a pack. Find out more at MIGardener.com. Here at Outpost Natural Foods, it's not just that we're community-owned that sets us apart. It's the fabulous foods we sell. We celebrate Earth Day every day by offering our customers the finest natural and organic food selections in greater Milwaukee. Outpost local farmers and vendors provide our stores with a delicious selection of fresh Fresh seasonal produce that you won't want to miss. Outpost stores are located in Milwaukee, Wauwatosa, Bayview, and Mequon. We're a real Milwaukee original where anyone can shop and anyone can join. For the whole scoop about Outpost, we invite you to visit www.outpost.coop. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show is brought to you by the following. Clyde's Vegetable Planting Chart, Dharmaceutical, Dr. Earth, Flame Engineering, Handy Safety Knife, Hydro Box, Wisconsin Greenhouse Company, MI Gardener, Outpost Natural Food Co-op, Root Maker, Soil Diva, Blue Mills Landscape and Garden Center. Find all sponsors at the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com and thank them for their support. So you've heard us talk about Blue Mills Landscape and Garden Center. You've heard the advertisements on our program, the official garden center of the radio show. But have you been there? Have you seen the 40 varieties of bulk material they have available? Have you met the knowledgeable staff? Have you got the plants that they still have available? Well, if you haven't, you need to go on over there, let your kids play on their enclosed giant playground while you talk to them about your landscape and garden needs. You can find them at 4930 West Loomis Road, just south of Layton. You can call 414-282-4220 or go to bluemills.com. Back to the Wisconsin Vegetable Garden Radio Show with your hosts Joey and Holly Baird. But we don't have to go to the I, the Organic Three One Plant Guard Hotline because our guest is sitting right in the studio. Holly Baird is a multi-award-winning Wisconsin State Fair canner who didn't start canning as some may think when she was a child, but later gathered the information in life. Welcome to the program, Holly. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Uh, many people think that you have to learn how to can at a young age. And many people who have heard the stories about canners uh, have heard that, oh, I started it when I was six years old with my grandmother or my mom. You have a different story to tell of when you learned how, and, uh, how to can. That's correct. So I'm a city girl. And we and I, I thought canning was for country people. <laughs> so that's what I thought. Like, yeah. You don't can when you go to the store. You never canned in your life. Oh, heck no. 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 Because, um, and talk about your upbringing. Ne- that was necessary. We had a, a, a very small garden in my backyard and in our backyard growing up. And we, we didn't have a compost pile. Um, but we didn't can. It, we would eat the stuff that came out of the garden. We would bake with it, make whatever foods with it. Um, but if canned goods, you know, came from the shelf on the local store so fast forward to meeting you and then probably about i don't know i think eight or nine years ago we had this garden that just started to be prolific we had tons of tomatoes tons of cucumbers you and i went strawberry picking and uh we had all this this produce and i said what are we gonna do this produce and you told me that we were gonna can it and i said good luck with that let me know how that works out for you and then you you taught me some things. We we got a book and stuff, and we went to uh, the store and got some canning supplies. And 
and then soon um, it became kind of a very productive hobby for me. I took some classes through the local rec department, and um, then I went on to win some awards at the the state fair. Now, what are some important things that we need to remember when we're canning? I think the biggest thing is is that canning is a science. Um, a lot of people say if you can cook, you can can, but I think if you can bake, you can can because baking is a science. If you don't bake your cake properly, it turns out to a brownie. Out, <laughs> it's a brownie. Yeah, to a brownie. Yeah. Or your cookies are going to run all over the place or whatever. So it's a science. Baking is a science. Canning is a science. So if you can bake, you can can. I mean, if you can cook, you can can, but you have to just make sure you're following a recipe. You're following the recipe exactly. Well, well let's talk about the recipes. Uh, can one use an old recipe or that's laying around or they find on the website or it's my great-grandmother's whatever? Can they use that to can tomatoes or pickles or whatever sure. the case is? So or what's the recipe, guidelines? Yeah. You want to use something that's been published within the last 10 to 15 years. So things have changed. Food science has changed. The makeup of our food has changed. Um, how the, we depletion store, the depletion of certain of, items. That's correct. So you want to use something that's been that's been published or yeah within the last 15 10 to 15 years i I'm, i'll give you some some good resources um at the end here but you want to something that's been published the last 15 years say you do have grandma's spaghetti sauce recipe and you want to can it you can look at recipes and you can probably find something very similar there's a lot of spaghetti sauce recipes out there there's a lot of xyz if it seems unsafe to can it if you're like i don't know if i should can this beer, bacon, maple, jelly, it's probably unsafe to can. You, If you think about canning, you want to think about your canning, what essentially is the whole food ingredient. So you're instead of canning something like beer, bacon, jelly, maybe you want mm-hmm. to can. Um, is there such a thing as beer, bacon? There is. Je- okay. Yeah. Is it safe to can, though? No. Okay. So, um, yeah, so you want to think about that kind of stuff. You, If you are unsure, there's a lot of good resources out there. The biggest thing is is that canning is a science. You need to be safe. Botulism still exists. There was a case about five years ago for people in Colorado who actually died from botulism. Um, so you want to keep that in mind, that there's good and bad things in your soil. Those things can come into your jars. That's why it's good to be safe. And when you say it's a science, there's a certain r- uh, procedure in which one has to follow at a certain time frame and temperature and ingredients in order to make sure that those bad bacteria doesn't exist inside the food in which you're preserving that is going to be shelf-stable for a number of months and eventually you are going to consume. Another thing is is that no matter how experienced you are in canning, cooking, whatever, you always want to read the recipe ahead of time when you can. There's things that require soaking for 24 hours or 3 hours or whatever. If you start a project at 8 p.m. or you need to soak it for 3 hours and you need to be up to, for work the next day, you are not going to be a happy canner. And, and you can't just go... I'll stop it now. I'll go to work. I'll come back. That's what we're talking about. You're talking about it has to be a boom, boom, boom procedure. It just can't be I'll do a little bit on Tuesday, some on Thursday, finish it up on Saturday. Right. So time is time is of the essence when it comes to to canning. It's, um, it's a matter of just making sure that you are being safe and also having the proper ingredients on, ta- on hand. You can't always just substitute something for you something. Can, can you substitute anything? Not, not really, no. Um, the the reason why these recipes are tested and safe is because because that's how you need to follow them. Uh, what kind of jars is is required? Uh, what can or can't we use uh, when it comes to this, or sure. what is recommended? So you want to use mason jars or canning jars, and these jars are made to withstand being reused. They're made made to withstand the heat of canning, the pressure. If you use pressure canning, the pressure of canning. Um, you know, if they're mason jars, they they usually say mason on them. You'll see other brand names like Ball or Kerr on them. Older ones will say typically mason on them. You you can tell a mason jar from just like an old peanut butter mayonnaise jar. Uh, what would you say is the easiest thing to can? I think probably anything tomato-based. If you want to just make salsa or can home tomatoes or pa- pasta sauce, um, all of those things are pretty simple because you are tomatoes are high in acid as is, so it's pretty safe. Um, anything with pickles, cucumbers is pretty easy, but you just have to... Um, Make sure you're working quickly. So something like if you're making pasta, you have to let it cook. Pasta sauce, 
you have to let it cook down for a while, so that gives you time to um, do other things. You don't have to feel rushed. Something like jam, people think, oh, you can can jam fast. That's easy. It's just jam. But jam, you have to work quickly, and you have to make sure you're doing it correctly as you do need it to set. And Otherwise, there, you end up with syrup. Well, there's there's water bath canning. There's pressure canning. And then there's refrigerator canning. Can you touch on a little bit of all three of those? And, uh, and there's some people that do not choose to water bath or pressure can, but they want to can, so the refrigerator can. Right. So refrigerating canning is basically you are you're doing the same steps as canning, but you're gonna instead of making it shelf stable, you're just gonna put it in your fridge. Same thing for freezer. Um, refrigerator. What do we look in time frame? Uh, what compared to months. okay compared to a, sh- a shelf stable, which is. Ideally, you want to anything you can. You want to eat it within a year. Doesn't mean that when it reaches that year mark that it's going to turn bad and explode. It's just that if you are canning, you want to keep that in mind: um, how much you're canning versus how much you're actually consuming. What are some good resources in which one can uh, get a baseline for the canning procedures? Sure. So one of them is through ball canning, which is fresh preserving.com ball canning is the one who makes the jars they have the ball blue book which is a very good book 500 plus recipes yeah great great information you can get that at a local hardware store some local retailers it's like seven bucks if you're paying more than seven or eight bucks for that you're paying too much um you can find resources at your library better homes and gardens has good recipes for can i can this type questions the National Center for Home Food Preservation has really great information. Um, and then also you can check out your local master canner if there is one. Uh, when we talk about um, that type of the, the ball, ball, ball book, it's not just a recipe book. There is other information that is in that book that can help the kid. Yeah, there's um, recipes, there's step-by-step instructions. There's nice pictures. There's nice pictures. Same thing with Better Homes and Gardens. I I start with their book called You Can Can, and it's got step-by-step instructions. It's really helpful. So if you look through a canning book and you're like, I don't need a bunch of recipes, I want like the visual, definitely look for that as well. And... Uh that's that's basically self canning 101. Uh, anything else that people need to know uh, before they just decide to uh, the 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 freshness of the produce is key, is it not? Yeah, definitely. So something, especially something like if you're trying to make cucumber pickles, fresh cucumbers, you want to harvest them when they're small and definitely want to work quickly. So freshness of produce is is what is key for everything. So that's just a little bit about how you can have and uh, perform safe canning in your home. Uh, And it always works if you have a friend to to help you out uh, to to go along with it or find somebody who's experienced that can teach you as well. When we come back, it's all about your garden questions and our garden answers. You can always visit our website, thewisconsinvegetablegardener.com. Check out all of our videos and send us an email. You're listening to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show. Send your questions in now. To the IV Organics 3-in-1 Plant Garden Instant Access text hotline at 414-368-9311. That number again, text 414-368-9311 and send your garden question in. The number one key to healthy, productive plants are the roots. Starting from seed to full-grown plants, RootMaker.com has the answer. From seed starting trays with an innovative design that air prunes the roots, creating a fabulous root system, never again will you have root-bound plants to multiple-gallon grow bag sizes to raise beds. RootMaker.com has your grow needs covered. Visit RootMaker.com. Dharmaceuticals essential oils are high-grade, very pure, and high in quality. They have synergized blends made with the finest raw materials. For more information and to order, visit DharmaCeuticals.com. The new way to support your tomatoes, wrap it and snap it. Tomatosnaps.com. Take the pain out of planting with the Pro Plugger 5-in-1 planting tool. Step, twist, pull, and you're ready to plant. Digs perfect size planting holes. Soil gets stored in the tube and empties from the top. Help for, for weeding. ProPlugger.com. 
Spending time scrubbing pesky dirt off your hands after gardening? Use Workman's Friends Superior Skin Cream with added barrier protection, creating a protective layer on your skin surface, allowing for easy cleanup, all while moisturizing and healing your skin. Non-greasy, fragrant-free, and fast-absorbing. Apply first, get to work, wipe clean. This friend has you covered for whatever you're getting into. Visit WorkmansFriendBrand.com. Soil Diva is the best-kept secret in the gardening world. Soil Diva is an all-natural, liquid, biological soil and plant stimulant product. Check it out at SoilDiva.net. Do you have a problem with deer or small herbivores eating your vegetation? There is a natural solution that is safe for your pets and family. BobX is the answer. An environmentally friendly solution to protect your plants will not wash off and is guaranteed. BobX deer was independently tested against nine known competitors and rated 93% effective, second only to a physical barrier. BobX can be used on all types of ornamentals, trees, and shrubs. Ask for it by name at your local independent garden center. Find out more, visit BobX.com. B O B B. BEX.COM. Blue Mel's Garden and Landscape Center offers an awesome selection of high quality garden and landscape products. We have just the plants you're looking for annuals, perennials, veggies, herbs, and more. Plus, you can always count on us to answer all of your questions and offer expert advice. Blue Mel's also carries the largest selection of bulk landscape materials in the area. Enjoy a beverage from our coffee shop while your kids run around in our huge playground. Join our growing list of highly satisfied customers. Visit the garden center that offers everything you're looking for. Visit Blue Mel's today. Blue Mel's 4930 West Loomis Road, 414-282-4220. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show is brought to you by the following. Ivy Organics, Power Planter, Root Assassin, Beans and Barley, BioSafe, Bob X, Pomona Universal Pectin, Pro Plugger, Standard Process, Tomato Snaps. Find all sponsors at the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener.com and thank them for their support. Now back to the Wisconsin Vegetable Garden Radio Show with your hosts, Joey and Holly Baird. Ivy Organics Grow on Plant Garden naturally protects plants against damaging sunburn. Insects and rodents protects newly installed plants and trees. Shield prune and damage surfaces for use on your roses. Fruit and nut trees, ornamental trees, and shrubs. This product is non-toxic, environmentally safe, and organic. For more information, visit ivyorganics.com. You can send us an email through Ivy Organics through one plant in- email inbox. That address is twvgshow at gmail.com. Or you can also send us a text on the instant access IV Organic Throne Plant Guard text hotline at 414-368-9311. Always give us a, t- uh, give us a text, uh, send us a text there. Uh, what's that text line again? It's 414-368-9311. Yeah, my paperwork was not in front of me. Uh, let's see here. What advice do you have for watering? What advice for watering can you offer me? Sure. So with... Um, with watering, you want to water either early or late in the day. And if you can use mulch, you know, add that to your garden. It's going to help suppress weeds. It's also going to help keep moisture in. And we want to water twice as much as you think you need as the soil will use it all up. Um, and definitely just uh, pay attention. Make, in, make, get yourself on a watering schedule. In containers, you're going to have to water much, much quicker because it's ele- or much more often because it's elevated and it determines the amount of mass of soil that's in that container. 25 gallons is going to dry out much slower than 5 gallons. And during the hottest parts of the year, um, you're probably going to have to water twice a day, sometimes your regular garden or yes. raised bed or something. And, and you can use mulch in a container. That's not a, a, a problem. Uh, we are going to discuss uh, canning, or we're going to discuss watering next week uh, on the program, so we'll get more in-depth in uh, the procedures and the proper ways to water your garden if the sky is not providing that for you. So Miranda wants to know, we talked about mycorrhizae, um, fungi in our soil. She wants to know, she lives in a condo. She needs to buy soil. She wants to know if there's any life in that soil. She loves gardening. In a bag, in in a bag, bag soil, soil. Mm-hmm. yes. And she wants to say she loves gardening. So go Miranda. Yeah. Uh, yes, there are microorganisms, uh, mycorrhizae and fungi in a bag of compost potting soil. Uh, that That is uh, the case. Now, the only exception to that rule is if your Getting soilless potting soil or soilless mix that does not contain, that's been sterilized. That's when your, your mycorrhizae and a lot of your fungi doesn't exist because it doesn't contain that soil, uh, in the, the mixture. But, uh, st- we, 
when we do containers, we use 100% compost. You can use a Dr. Earth uh, potting mix that contains the beneficial nutrients and recommendations for that. Uh, always look for something with a slow-release fertilizer so it feeds the plant throughout the growing season. Uh, let's see here. Next question is, uh, Simmons wants to know, can you propagate, can you propagate a Yacon tuber to a new plant like you can a sweet potato? No, now, first can't. of all, what is a yacon for those who are not familiar with that particular root crop? Sure. So yacon is a root crop from South America, also known as a yucca. Um, and it's just basically less like a less starchy potato. It's a root crop. It's fun to grow. We can grow them here in Zone 5. You can grow them a lot of places. So not you can't you cannot propagate the yacon tuber, but you can propagate the rhizome. And the rhizome is basically at the top of that tuber. So it's not the part it's the part that sits like kind of level to the soil. It looks like little marbles mm-hmm. uh, that's purple and and you want to save that in sand over the winter months in climates such as the upper portions of the mid uh, of the United States as though uh, it will set and rot in the ground, it will not come back. Now, where it's originally from in South America, they can grow it all almost year-round, and they'll just take the, the, the rhizomes and replant and grow again uh, in that instance there. Uh, so somebody asked, can you save corn pollen? Yes. Uh, now, this seems like a, a question. There's more details than what we're going to offer here, but, yes, you can save corn pollen. Um, there's a procedure in which you can capture the pollen, save it, and freeze it, and then repollinate corn. Uh, there are certain people that do this, and for specific reasons and purposes, uh, but it can be done. Next question. Um, any suggestions on how to prepare radish seed pods? I never knew you could eat them. I usually just connect the seeds, want to try, collect the seeds, want to try eating them. So we harvest the pods when they are full and plump. Okay, first of all, for radish pod seeds. The, okay. We typically grow the radish for the bulb. In the later portions of spring and summer is where we're at currently. The, the, the plant is a short season, daylight sensitive, cool season crop. It will go to seed or bulb. So you, if left alone, it'll put a lot of flowers on. A lot of the flowers will turn into little, what will look like pea pods in a green state. So you can harvest those pea pods and eat them, and they are actually have the same flavor. In some instances, not the same amount of heat that the bulb can, would necessarily contain. Uh, so you can let your radishes go to seed and eat the pods, and you get like a second crop of them. You can leave them alone, they'll dry, and you can save the seeds inside of those pods. There are people who choose to uh, prepare the pods by pickling them in a refrigerator state of canning. Uh, you can also just eat them as well. You can saute them as uh, in combination uh, with an Asian dish type of um, making. You can just saute them as is, too, yeah. with some butter and garlic, whatever. So there's there's lots of things you can do with them, get creative. You could probably roast them, but they're little. they're pretty small, so roasting them would be a little bit difficult. You wouldn't have to roast them for very long. One plant can produce dozens and dozens and dozens of pods. And you want to get them when they're, just like when you're harvesting green beans, you want to harvest them uh, whenever they are more of a younger, tender type of uh, structure. You don't want them to wait until they are super, uh, super big and tough because then um, then we will go ahead and uh, they'll be tough and you won't be able to eat them at all. <laughs> I've noticed a few holes on my Brussels sprout leaves that I need to take care of. I have a batch of fruit tree spray I mixed up earlier for my apple trees. Can I use that fruit tree spray on the vegetables? The label says good for apples, fruit trees, and strawberries. It doesn't say anything about vegetables. Well, the answer, the short answer is, uh, the safe answer is no, you cannot interchange those two. Uh, typically the spray for trees uh, are have a different property and different structure for those particular insects that are not good for the vegetation for vegetables. Uh, if it doesn't say it is good for vegetables, you shouldn't use it for vegetables. Uh, you want to read the label uh, very closely to find out uh, if they are interchangeable, but most times they are not. Jesse would like to know, is it too late to plant pole beans? I'm in Green Bay, Wisconsin. I forgot that I had bought some from MI Gardener. Love them. Also love your radio show and podcast. Well, thank you for that, Jessica. It's based on 
uh, where you live, and, and since we have listeners all over the country, pole beans take 70 to 80 days to reach maturity before they produce and will produce till frost. Bush beans will take 40 to 60 days to reach maturity and will produce for two to three weeks, and their life cycle is over. So it depends on where you live, what is applicable for your particular area. Is it beneficial to trim your pole beans and cut back the suckers on your tomatoes? So let's go to Ben. He is the Farm Property Manager at Standard Process. Standard Process is your trusted whole food supplement manufacturer for over 90 years. To help identify the best supplements for you, find your local health care professional today. Go to standardprocess.com forward slash patient. Hi, this is Ben Bartlett from the Standard Process Organic Farm. Today we have questions about pruning your vegetables. Things like pole beans and tomatoes tend to grow really well in this kind of weather. Should you be pinching back the tops of your pole beans or pinching those suckers off your tomatoes to get more fruit? The real answer is you won't get a lot more fruit, but you could have a healthier plant in the long run. The other reason to pinch suckers off of tomatoes or pinch the top of those pole beans off after they've set fruit and you're getting towards the end of the season is it will really help those plants mature the fruit that they have because they're putting less energy into foliage growth late in the year and they're going to put more energy into maturing that fruit that you have. So there's a couple reasons to do it. It won't necessarily lead directly to more fruit but it may lead to better fruit in the long run. Before we get into what's coming up next week on the program, Holly, remind them about the executive sponsor. The executive sponsor of the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener radio show is Power Planter. Planting conditions are always favorable with the Power Planter Earth Auger. No matter what the job is, Power Planter has the right size for you. Simply attach to a drill and let the Power Planter do the work for you. Create planting holes fast and efficiently with ease. No matter the soil type, it does the job effortlessly. Increase your root to soil contact. Leave the shovel and spade in the shed. Hand welded and made in the USA, we offer a lifetime warranty on product defects. Find the size that fits your project at powerplanter.com. Coming up next week on the program, do not miss it. Tell your friends and family and your garden buddies. We're going to talk about watering. The hottest portions of the year is upon us. There's several options in which you can and should water, and we'll go over those. As well as essential oils, how they benefit you in the garden and out of the garden. And house plant guru Lisa Eldridge Steinoff will be with us. Plus, your garden questions. Miss any portion of this program or want to revisit it in its entirety, you can do that in a couple of different ways. One, by going to your favorite podcast providing website and searching the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener radio show. You can also go to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener dot com, clicking on the radio tab at the top of the page for full length or the highlight tab on the right hand side for segments of all past shows. Until next week, for Holly Baird, I'm Joy Baird, and we will see you in the garden. You have been listening to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show. Tell a friend and join Joey and Holly again next week so we can all grow together. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show is a production of the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com in association with WI Garden Media Broadcasting, live from the WNOV 860 AM and the W293CX 106.5 FM, Courier Communications Studios in Milwaukee, Wisconsin.